All right, good afternoon, everyone. So today in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about how emergency vehicle preemption works. Um, to be specific, optical infrared emergency vehicle preemption. Um, I have all the necessary equipment here in front of me in order to do it uh, with the preemption part and a traffic uh, controller equipment part. Um, I also have my laptop right there to show you uh, the programming logs that I'll be sh I'm doing here in a second when I activate the preemption. But yeah, so let's get started. So as you can see, I'm using Tomar for my preemption demonstration. Uh, Tomar Strocom 2, it's called. I have, I'm using a 2140 OSP or optical signal processor card. In other words, it's like a face selector card inside of an 1881 card cage holder harness uh, connector wires. Over here, um, over a little bit, I have the newer style detectors. Um, this is the 4090 series, 4091 SD uh, optical infrared detector. Um, these are really great detectors and they can pick up a, a very long distance. Um, it is a standard detector. Uh, if I didn't say that already, I don't remember, remember if I did or not, but it is. So somewhere self-testing or somewhere um, standard. So this is a standard one. Uh, I have an emitter right here with a visible light filter on it, model 3065 um, emitter. So the strobe won't be bright as it does flash very bright and very fast. I'm hooked up to a 12 volt battery. I also have a Tomar handheld remote tester. It's, it's a strobe switch tester, but it's it still outputs high priority for um, preemption, so it can still do an emergency vehicle preemption for like traffic signal controls at an intersection. Model, what is it, uh, 1760. So I'll be using that too. And then for the traffic controller to preempt it, I am using um, an Econolite ASC32100 traffic controller. Uh, this is writing, you can see a, a database right now. Um, push that button so the backlight stays on. Um, a current database, a real database uh, from a town next to me or a city rather. Um, I'm not gonna say where, what intersection it is or what city it is or uh, whatever for privacy reasons. That's why you can see the data key tag is flipped around so you can't see what intersection it is um, just for privacy reasons. So and I'm not going to show any programming on this controller uh, for their privacy and um, their information. So the only the only screen you're going to see the entire time is this, the status display screen. Um, I am using preamp number four. Um, on the traffic controller, which will be phases uh, two and five. And then um, on the uh, OSP card, I am using channel one or channel A, uh, whichever way you want to say it. Um, and again, you can see my serial cable is hooked up to my laptop. And I'll show you the real time logs coming in. Um, let me refresh my screen by clicking using the mouse. There you go. Uh, so it stays on. You can see I already erased the logs before so it starts fresh and I have auto refresh enabled so um, when I preempt it it'll come up automatically. So let's get started. I'll do the emitter first and then I'll do the handheld tester. Um, so again there's no really reason to worry about um, strobe lights because again I have the visible light filter on so you won't be seeing a strobe. So. Here we go. Again, just as a reminder on here, channel one and preemptor four. So let me flip the toggle switch and get it started. So there's the green indicator light, meaning it's picking up the emitter. Uh, preempt four is active, A is active. That's what A stands for. It's gonna go two and five here right now. Any second. There it goes. Now it's in its dwell time. Um, and I know this does have a maximum time of 120 seconds. Uh, now it's just gonna be in a green rest until the emergency vehicle goes through. 
with the emitter. Um, you can kind of see the straw flickering through the visible light filter, but it's not bad. The, the reason it looks purple is just because of how the filter is. And now when I turn the emitter off, say the emergency vehicle has gone through, it will terminate on the card like that. You can see on here now there's the preemption that just happened and it's gonna, now everything goes back to normal on the controller or at the intersection. The since this is running coordinated, now it's gonna deduct the time and resync the clocks. Um, that usually takes some time, but yeah. Again, I'll do a demonstration now of the test remote. Um, I'll show you this time what it looks like on the computer screen. But here, let me put this up here to the detector. Maybe get a little closer. Kind of kind of close to it at a good angle. Here we go. Preempt again. And how does that it? There we go. Hold it there for a second. And then when I release it, I'll show it on here this time. The green light will go up right about now. And there's the log. So you can see on here, um, uh, the first one that we did was its, it's vehicle. Um, the ID is a thousand. That's what I set the ID to be using the software. You know, preemption, yes, channel one. Um, and then this, the remote is ID is NS. I don't know what that stands for, but it's also says vehicle. So, and there's the start time and the end time. So yeah, that's how that works. And then this will be, now it's adding the time on here and pretty soon it'll be back in coordination. But yeah, so now it's gonna just recycling the time. Um, or going through the phases as normal now on the traffic controller at the intersection. Uh, but yeah, so that's how preemption works. You just have, um, you just have the emitter mounted on top of an emergency vehicle. And when they go code three or whatever to an emergency lights and siren, um, the emitter turns on when, well, when they turn their lights on rather, um, uh, the emitter typically doesn't come on right away until one of the two happens. Um, at least both have to happen. Uh, the door has to be shut of, like that's for a fire truck, for example. Let's think of it this way. The doors have to be shut. Um, um, there's door sensors for the emitter to come on. Um, and then there's a parking brake sensor. And when the brake is applied, the emitter stays off. And when the uh, brake is um, disengaged or in drive or in gear, um, then the emitter will automatically come on. The reason, I'm not sure why there's door sensors. I have to look that up. Um, but the reason that there's a parking brake sensor is that say there's a car accident at an intersection and um, you know, a fire truck has to pull up to the intersection and park there. Um, well, you can't just leave the emitter running or that will max out both the preemption system and the traffic controller. Even though it'll max it out and things will go back to normal, it's not good for it. So um, what happens is when they pull up to the scene, um, they throw it in the park, the emitter shuts off and that will terminate the preemption at the intersection so that it lights, the, the traffic lights can go back to normal. Um, typically, depending on what the city does or what the jurisdiction is or however the police do it, um, they would probably take control of the lights and the traffic cabinet by putting it in the flash or manually controlling the lights with the button cycling through the lights to direct traffic. It just depends, but that's a whole nother story. But um, it's good to have the depression terminate just so that's out of the way. Um, that, or if another emergency vehicle needs to pull up like an ambulance at the intersection, if they dispatch saying someone's hurt, um, they need to preempt it again. So, you know, the, they can get a green light approaching the intersection and all, 
other direction stop. So that's how that works. And then with the, you know, with the preemption system at an intersection, um, that runs 24-7, 365. Uh, the detectors are always, always on the lookout for an emergency vehicle. They're always on standby mode. And the second they see an emitter, they pick up that optical signal from the emitter. It sends the signal to the phase selector of the OSP card telling it, hey, emergency vehicles approaching, give them a green light, preempt the intersection. Like I just showed you, and that's how that works. And then on the laptop, they can download the software and um, uh, pull up the logs to see what's been happening. And also, um, again, I said I'm not gonna show anything on here. Well, let me do this. I can at least show this to you, but I'm not gonna show you the programming really fast because just again, for privacy, but I'm gonna do, let's see, da, 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 utilities, log buffers, display, controller events. So this, I can show you, this won't show anything private. Um, you can go in the history and the log buffers of a traffic controller and see the preemption um, when it was inactive, inactive. So I can go down, preemptor active for like we just did, and then it goes offline, preemptor inactive, coordinator, active online so that's how that works so you can see the history on there too so yeah that's all emergency vehicle preemption works there's also gps preemption which i can make another video of down the road when i get that equipment back but yeah so that's it for now so guys thanks for watching and take care and stay safe thanks
Fire it, come, come in. Can I go off now? <laughs> 